I worked and I learned a lot from Nigerians. Nigerians have got a common thing together. When they are outside Nigeria, they actually come together. They cluster themselves. When they are outside, they develop and design a gene that is higher and smarter. You go to Massachusetts, you'll find out that Massachusetts in the US has got the highest number of Kenyans. Almost, almost three, four hundred thousand. But they all speak Kikuyu. They have traditional Kikuyu traditions. And they don't welcome you into them. Do I blame them? Hell no. I love them because kisses have brought themselves. You go to Minnesota, there's Kehumbo village, there's Kehancha, that diversity, Keroka, they now look at my fellow Luyas. Two things. And Luyas is most serious but by the world. But by the way, you remain here. It's true. <laughs> so, we have brain game that is servicing developed countries. We have brain brain that is taking away from us to outside the country. South Africa has legalized, Denmark, Israel has never decriminalized. Our land, yes, 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 I don't give a damn because what is in here they cannot take, or can take. Now I will speak to you from the. I'll give an example. When I was a great digger in uh, UK, in, uh, in uh, South, London, South, South London, a Nigerian came in and saw me and some white tattooed fellows. And then he was so surprised seeing a black man. Because they don't do that. Nigerians do not do certain jobs in Europe. So he came to me and said, Ah, Afro. He said, okay. Kenya. Ah, okay. Why do this? Why do you cast from Africa? So the man started engaging me. Then he told me that the Africans don't carry white man's dead spirits. He removed me from there and took me to security camp. I worked and I learned a lot from Nigeria. Nigerians have got a common thing together. When they are outside Nigeria, they actually come together. They cluster themselves. When they are outside, they develop and design a gene that is higher and smarter. Here we call them thieves, drug dealers. You do not know about Nigeria. They have grown me. Maybe part of the intelligence they have came as a result of associating with them. Through them, they advise me on what to do. Go school here, go school here. We go to the university, we sit in the same class, and Nigeria will be looking at me and I will be looking at him. And you'll be looking at the white man as a common enemy to both of us. And that's why I was able to go to law school, because of them. They are more united than Kenyans when they go there. And the class of Kenyans that go there went there during those days. Let me come into the middle. Well, those who are unfortunate. Like if you look at their background, you mean I come to because of that IQ, they were able to go out. And because of lack of education, they had to class themselves into tribal communities. You go to Massachusetts, you'll find out that Massachusetts in the US has got the highest number of Kenyans. Almost, almost three, four hundred thousand. But they all speak Kikuyu. They have traditional Kikuyu traditions. And they don't welcome you into them. Do I blame them? Hell no. I love them because at least they have done something progressive. Look at Luos in Texas. I hope my friend there is not in the Luos and Lampard in two cities in Texas. Look at the Kisses in Minnesota. Kisses have also copied. They have copied Nigerians and they have also copied Luos. Kisses have brought themselves. You go to Minnesota, there's Kehumbo village. This Kehancha, that diversity, Keroka, they have come together and they have created some kind of self realization in this. Where you find out that the higher portion of academia 
In Kisiland, is paid on them. Why do they have the No. But that is the reason why migration is. Now, look at my fellow Luyas. Two things. And Luyas is most serious about in the world. But why do you continue to remain here? It's true. <laughs> Two, jealousness. He has come here and he said, Luya, what am I going to do? Jealousness. Like me now, yes, I'm a Luya, but, but if I was to change my tribe, maybe I'll become a Christian. Because my people are pathetic. They don't like assisting each other. They, don't, they stab each other wherever they sit. Show me an enclave in the US where of Luya is concentrated like Jewish, Isis, and Luos. None. It's true. That's why the women come to elections to vote. You see how they vote. Malaya, who pay a person to come and see, Allah will not be a poor. Kesh will get a woman to come and see. Sakon will not be a woman. It's a woman. Now, when it comes to soccer, when it comes to soccer, Nigerians and Jamaicans, they have got the same symptoms. If you look at Jamaicans, because I lived in Jamaica, a piece of something there, I was, when I was working here, I was actually on my way to Kingston. Jamaicans are naturally athletic. If you look at the gene profiling, gene profilification, that Jamaicans and um, Nigerians probably, but Nigerians are sports. They take it seriously because it's enshrined and grounded in their pride. Okay, the, the, the Nigerians in the diaspora support Nigerian sports people for more than even the Nigerian governments. Given the fact that Nigerians' diversity is different, we have a federal government, we have a state government, we have counties within government, three tiers of government. So each county is very proud to produce somebody and then push that person to the state level. And then those who come from New York State, for example, who are doctors in the US, who are doctors in the UK, who are lawyers, who come up and say, we are no lawyers. We are producing We are produced someone from a dog, no state, and we must make sure that the law wins and our shines. So there is that competition. My son plays for Chelsea. My son is a soccer man. But then, what can I do? Bring him here? We are going to this idiocracy here. When you give them money like AFC Delvers, they come to you, they say, let's just play in some kind. We need some kind of facilitation. Now I'm joking. Where are they going? They got it. I'm paying for them. Now see how I'm going to pay for them. There's a lot of stupidity in them. That's why they don't see me like that. God has got Rachel, who is my friend and my mentor. And you can see how it was clustered around their people. So that is something that you cannot Go others, just as spirit, and when you wake up, the patient is there. Now, when it comes to what you also talked about, the Odessa Rika, or Chino Achebe, these are people who are there during those days. When Maseno had come from his school to teach mathematics, Yana would say that I was in Maseno. Eh? Dr. Kino Baka would say I was in Cambridge. That pride. People like Professor Mungi Wadiyo, they never went beyond Form 4. Wallace Wainka never went to beyond Form 4. He got Division 3, even Mungi have got. But he had added them. Mungi has supervised most PhDs than any other person. Only Chino Achebe, Chino Achebe can come with them. There is thus gene in somebody, and that's why I look at the educational system as fake. Because what I was trying to do as president, I was going to create a new cluster of education with the concept of Kenya through a referendum. Do we really need to go to school from Monday to Friday? Really? Do we really need to work from Monday to Friday? Really? What happens in the Middle East? Do we need Muslims to go to worship on Friday without being treated fairly like the Seventh day Adventists on Saturday and other Christians on Sunday? Do we need to have Friday as a special day, holiday for the Muslims to run worship, and then giving them one now? So there are those challenges and there are those disparities. But unless we do something, or we get many of us, many of us who maybe have been there to come back like I did, like I did come back, hmm, why do Kenyans refuse to know about brain, 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 and brain 
pay. Brain pain and brain gain. We have brain gain that is servicing developed countries. We have brain drain that is taking away from us to outside the country. During this period of, of migration, why can't we be like Botswana? Well, if we take our students outside, we pay for them and they make a contract to come and work inside that country for a number of years. Why can't we be like Malaysia? Well, they will give you a full scholarship for the principle that if you finish, you come back and develop Malaysia. Here, when you go and become number one, like some of us have done outside there, those companies come for you. They offer you a lot of money. But now, if you came back, what happened? Like when I came back, nobody wanted to associate with me. We are in Mutiabani, we are in Mugora, we are in Mwisi. I went to stay somewhere in Mugango Kukwa. It was not until I went to, uh, to Citizen TV that I never went back because people were like, Umuto Naisha Kukuba Naenda Tua Naenda Kwa Kesti. I've been a laughing stroke throughout, but do I really care about these motherfuckers? I don't give a damn. Because what is in here, they cannot take or partake. So we need to come to self-realization. We need to be who we are. I see a lot of leadership here. I see people here who have potential investors, leaders, governors, doctors, lawyers here. We don't need to wait for them to finish your language. This young man was my classmate in Kenya School of I was sitting there and I was older than everybody, including the teacher, the dean, and even the student in the school. But I sat like a fool for a whole year. Because I didn't want them to know what I had, because they would have failed me in the exam. So, was it necessary? I had to fight within my own process. So, unless you come to self realization, unless you need too much religion, I go judge you in What do you go to do? The whole day, stand, sit down, stand, sit down, give me money. Purification of the mind. See, very beautiful girls in the choir, pastors speaking in them, right or wrong. People going to confess before pastors. I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm saying as they finish. Those are the times of us to mature. You can pray to your God when you're sitting somewhere and God listen to you. I'm not saying don't go to church, but you've got to change your way of thinking and think what happened. I talk of the weak economy. Will you put your money? No, hell no. Sorry, I'm digressing. I was talking of the economic viability, agricultural viability, and medicinal value. My wife is a pilot. The kind of place she's piloting today is purely made up of fiber from weed in Kenya. One 50, 50, 50 kgs of weed is 3.2 million US dollars on the stock exchange. But I'm not talking of that weed which you smoke and then you hold. I'm talking of that which you smoke and then you die if you have a fat stomach. I'm talking of weed economics. Uganda has legalized, Malawi legalized. And furthermore, Malawi's president is a former bishop in Los Angeles. South Africa has legalized. Denmark, Israel has never decriminalized. Our land, yes, yes, I'm stupid pastor sitting on a chair and don't be a meal. That's where Kenya is. Kenya is where Nigeria was 50 years ago. And then there are cultural differences. Where it comes from, Numias. And uh, uncles who used to walk naked at night. That was an act to them. Walking naked made them a continue the legacy of our ancestors who used to walk naked. We called them night runners, but to us it was an art. Witchcraft was an art. Here, religious people come up and they say, We do Murogi. See, Murogi keeping us naked in the house. My friend, it's not easy, but if you can get somebody who keeps it in the house for purposes of traditional medicine. You should give credit to that person because Muzumbi had an American zoo. Like in Africa, we put a nyanyana and I got black pants in the house. Eh? Give her credit. Our stepmother has got snakes in her house. I'm afraid of going there, but I'm giving her credit because when I just pass near there, the things I see. But what I'm trying to say is I'm looking at the international platform cultural diversity, cultural differences. You might go there and start running at night. That's a double to them. If you commit it, you will be committing an, an act. Nudity is a crime unless it's done on designated areas. Marriages, for example, marriages. 
A Muslim is a potentially is a potentially active polygamous marriage. I read the case in the UK where a Muslim applicant, a British Muslim applicant, was denied entry of his wife from Zambia. And the reason why the denied entry of his wife into the UK was that he was not married. So when he went in to show the Islamic marriage certificate, they said no. They became definitive. They said that a Muslim does not marry. When he marries, his marriage is polygamous. It is active when he has one or two wives. It is potential when he has one because the expectations of him marrying a second wife are there. Therefore, he has to marry again. That's another value. So the end of the book, we a certificate. But that certificate is not recognized because of its activity and potentiality. Active because you have one wife. Potential because you are likely to marry a second wife. And then it becomes active, potentially polygamous marriage. So that's another thing. Why do you talk about the end of the book? Now, Islam, we are about the Sharia house, finally. I mean, these are things that we may not know. Um, raising children is another issue. I told Nana and Bino, come on, my uncle, I took one and put a question and Bino, I'm going to drop him on Zoom. So, he is equally put a gun and a drop. I'm going to stand and drop, and Bino is not crying, but I'm just saying it from the practical example. I'm going to stand and put a gun. My grandmother came on the day because I'm not going to see you tomorrow. This girl is going to buy a new woman. So I said, right now, I'm going to talk to you from Zungu. Because I am proud of my friend, but I did not have a daughter for 18 years. That's why some of us, when we were there, we had to cross that blanket. Because wherever you go, and that's the matter. So issues that come in and the consequences that are coming, you have really to be made aware. But that's not an issue for discussion today. Thank you. Charles, before I go, let me take to this opportunity to discuss, to congratulate <coughs> our government, um, the representative of the ministry, the minister, thank you very much for coming. And uh, the reason why I've gone that route is that uh, we are working as a, as a nation. We don't need to discriminate to talk to you somebody. But when there are facts, and you know that they're right, you mentioned Kenya is quite good. When she may want to pass my conveyances to the minister, who is my friend. Now, when it comes to your petition, sir, I'm not ready to support because there will be no lack of will in government. Most of those enemies are stupid crooks. They will not want to pass this, and I'm sorry to say that. The other day I saw your president wearing a shirt made out of cannabis, and then I said, Look, you are a man of God, you go to church every day. Go to the church, stand in the pulpit, and then announce, wear that shirt and go and announce the economic values. Cannabis, Uganda. So I do not want to waste my academic priorities and waste myself by going to see before some of these cheap people. I'm calling them cheap because they have no will of the people. I am sorry to say so. Some of the Kenyan MPs and dogs, they are related to go and do what have you, and they are the ones who are praying the president. Instead of helping the president to achieve his legacies, they are running around occupying space in the opposition politics. I know you are government and civil servants, you may not be very comfortable, but you are Kenyan, and that's why you are accepted to come. The majority of Kenyan MPs have let this country down. So why would I be part of them? I am not going to do that. 